Okay. Good morning, good afternoon to you all. The um, idea behind uh, this presentation is to talk about a subject that is uh, pretty new. It's the issue of Internet governance. In the history of the Internet, um, the, the history of the Internet is, is uh, pretty unique. Uh, the Internet grew um, organically without um, uh, oversight and control, so it, uh, it, had, it built its own development models. In fact, we have invented a new term for it, which is uh, governance, which is a word that comes from English, the English word governance. Uh, this word doesn't exist in Spanish, but governance is used to differentiate it from government, which at least in Spanish and in our cultures has a uh, connotation that has to do more with public policy. Whereas Internet governance has um, a multiplicity of aspects because Internet governance um, is derived uh, from the uh, specific characteristics uh, that Internet has. Uh, um, as you know, the Internet is a network of networks that works collaboratively. When you look for a definition of the Internet, the most um, appropriate definition is the one that I've just given you. It is a network of networks, which is a term that you have probably heard many times. But this is truly the best definition to describe the Internet. Because the Internet is uh, this precisely, it is a bunch of small networks, network like uh, you may have uh, you may have at your in your house your work uh, your university which uh, decided uh, voluntarily and collaboratively to connect it to something bigger which is the uh, some total of those networks which is known as the internet and this has a key characteristic a key feature uh, developing through this model and that feature is that there is no centralized control over the internet there is no um, there's no big master server no big central control there isn't such a thing uh, the Internet is nothing but a uh, global distribution of networks that decided to uh, cooperate and to connect. And this means that, for example, if we were to decide to uh, disconnect ourselves from the Internet and every other network decided to uh, unplug from the World Wide Web, there would be nothing left. Uh, there would be nothing in the middle, so we have no central machines. And there's also a design uh, specificity of the Internet, which is the fact that we talk about, uh, we say that the intelligence is located on the edges. So there is such a lack of a center that when you browse a web page, the web page is stored in a server which is at one edge of the web, not in the center, not in a central server. And the web page itself doesn't exist at the server. It is rather constructed through a set of instructions sent through the network by the explorer or the uh, browser that you use in your computer, which has the intelligence. And on the other edge, the server can build based on those uh, instructions that it receives to create a web page. That is the reason why sometimes whether you use one browser versus another browser in the same computer, the same web page can have a different appearance because the, the machine that is building the web page is in fact uh, the, 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 you know, your computer or the, the, you know, the, the terminal uh, and uh, the web browser that you are using. And when you bring these basic principles and scale them up to the global level, you will understand that the way in which the Internet is managed uh, globally, this Internet governance, uh, has the same characteristics. There are many uh, players involved. It is transparent. It is collaborative. And this uh, leads to a new uh, form of collaboration. It is something that is uh, very different from, uh, for example, uh, intergovernmental international organizations as we are used to uh, experiencing, for example, in the United Nations, in the United Nations family, for example. For instance, here we are recording this video in a very interesting forum, which is the Internet Governance Forum, which is um, it, it is it, it was. Uh, uh, brought together by the UN, but it's very fundamentally different from other UN meetings because each one of the relevant players involved, the stakeholders, uh, the academia, the private sector, the civil society, and governments, each participate um, as equals uh, in the forum. Imagine the contrast that this entails um, in terms of uh, governance models. And to be able to uh, fully understand how this works, it is useful to um, understand a little bit about what the Internet model is. Let me talk to you a little bit about what the, what the Internet model is, the, 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 the one that 
produce these governance models. So uh, the internet model has some basic features, which are uh, shared global ownership. There is no central control, as I mentioned before. Also, collaborative work models, including every uh, stakeholder, every relevant player. Also, development based on open standards, which um, is really the birthplace of our governance model. So the development of open standards. And these have three, uh, three openness characteristics. When you use the adjective open, you are referring to three separate things. Uh, first of all, they are uh, developed by uh, systems and processes that are themselves open. And what this means is that they are developed by uh, organizations that don't even ask you to be a member in order to be able to participate. You simply go ahead and participate. There is no membership requirement. There are no barriers uh, uh, of entry to participate in these processes. And also the results of these processes are in them are themselves open. The standards that we use in the Internet are open in uh, two additional senses. One is the, the specifications are known by everybody. So the protocols that are, are the result of these standard development processes, for example, IP, the Internet Protocol, that we all know, or the POP or SMTP, all those P's that you are used to working with are each uh, examples of this uh, model for uh, standard development. And the specification of these protocols is known worldwide. So, for example, when you need to develop uh, software based on these protocols, you know in detail the specifications. And this makes uh, your work as a developer much more efficient uh, to use these protocols. And to speak in more mundane terms, it is not the recipe for Coca-Cola that nobody knows, but rather these are open standards. So you can simply um, uh, look them up on Google, and you will find them available for all to read in a pure text format. Uh, so that not even the software that you use to read them uh, is uh, an inconvenient or a barrier. The second openness characteristic uh, is that they are not licensed, which means that we don't have to pay royalties in order to use them. Imagine how different it would be uh, to develop for the Internet if every time that we use uh, Internet protocol or any of the family of protocols that are used on the Internet, we had to pay uh, a U.S. penny. Uh, we certainly would not have reached the number of users that we have um, achieved uh, as quickly as we have. So this feature of openness, and openness not in a, in a 90s neoliberal sense of openness, but open in the sense that I've just explained, um, that it is open and transparent and participatory is, uh, again, a central uh, feature of the uh, development of the Internet. But the second uh, central characteristic that these governance structures has is what in English is known as bottom-up, which literally means from the bottom upwards in Spanish, but there is no proper way of translating it, just like uh, we had uh, with uh, governance, which is a term that we had to invent in Spanish. Um, even in Spanish, um, the notion of bottom-up may be easier to understand in English because it is an existing concept in English. But what bottom-up means, basically, is that instead of uh, things being imposed from the top, these are development models that um, take into account what the what the base is, what the grassroots need, and that is what drives the governance model. So they are built from the bottom-up. Now, the policies, not in terms of public policy, but in terms of uh, procedures and, uh, and the technologies themselves and the standards uh, that are used on the Internet are all based on these concepts. And that is a shift. It is a shift that, when it comes to thinking about governance models, is, is a shift that needs to be taken into account. And it is also critical to understand that these characteristics are vital for the continual development of the Internet, and they need to be preserved. And much of the, the struggle, much of uh, our day-to-day -day work has to do with preserving these central characteristics of the Internet in order to be able to keep Internet uh, or the Internet as a, a catalyst for growth and for innovation. We always say that, um, so in the history of humanity, no technology has been adopted as quickly as the Internet. And by quickly, uh, I mean in, in historical terms. And now we have achieved 2.5 uh, billion users. Uh, sketching some quick math will allow us to well congratulate ourselves from doing it so quickly. Uh, we have the, the record of uh, technology adoption. But at the same time, it means that there are still 5 billion people who are not connected to the Internet, which means that 
we have a daunting task, and it is critical to maintain those um, characteristics of the Internet in order to be able to connect as many people as possible. And there are three main characteristics. I uh, insisted on openness, but access and transparency are the two other characteristics that are also central. And in this regard, there are many ongoing debates in many different forums that um, make it very important to participate. Uh, remember that there are no membership requirements to participate in these things, so all of you are invited to participate. But participating and becoming involved entails um, becoming a part of the, the creation of the future of the Internet. And for that reason, um, with those characteristics and the transformational capacity that the Internet has, you are uh, joining in in what the future of humanity is going to look like. So we are, as I said, um, in a very important venue for Internet governance, which is the Internet Governance Forum. And the Internet Governance Forum is, as I said, a forum that is um, uh, gathered by the UN General Secretary every year. This year it is taking place in the city of Baku in Azerbaijan. It is the seventh uh, go Internet Governance Forum. And it is um, a forum that was the product of a process that was also led by another organization that is part of the UN family, which is the uh, International Telecommunications Union, which between 2002 and 2005 uh, carried out what we know now as the um, World Summit on the uh, Society of Information. And this wasn't the case from the beginning, but it took a lot of hard work. We achieved a forum that was multi-participatory, so having all relevant actors participate in the same forum. And I say that it wasn't easy in the beginning because the process that took us three years wound up being much more um, participatory than uh, the way it began. And it was uh, costly and it was hard work, but we need to be grateful for the possibility of, of keeping it that way. One of the... Uh, or rather, the uh, the concluding document of the World uh, Information uh, Society uh, Summit is known as the uh, Tunisia uh, Agenda because the last meeting was in Tunisia. And among the many points, it recommends the creation of the Internet Governance Forum, which is where we are today. And this forum was initially established for a period of five years, and it concluded uh, two years ago. So it was the 2006, 2008, 09, 10 uh, were the five that were originally foreseen, and they happened in Africa. Athens, Rio de Janeiro, uh, Hyderabad, uh, Sham el in Egypt, and the fifth uh, was in Vilnius um, uh, in uh, Lithuania. And uh, it was concluded that the forum had been uh, successful enough to renew its mandate for five more years. So now we are in the second um, series of uh, Internet Governance Forums. And the Internet Governance Forum, to, um, for you to understand these new governance models, uh, has some uh, unique features that are worth mentioning. First, as I said before, uh, the fact that despite the fact that it is a forum organized by an intergovernmental organization, which is the United Nations, and the forum itself is open to uh, all participants uh, equally, and this is a very important feature. The second uh, central feature is that it is uh, strictly a forum. That is, it is a place for uh, debate and discussion of best practices, recommendations, experiences, etc., but not a decision-making venue. And this is rather surprising for everybody, uh, you know, traveling so many miles to know that we're not going to make any decisions about anything. And most of all, it is surprising for governments who are used to a different, um, a different process. Uh, you know, uh, for instance, that uh, traditional uh, uh, government forums conclude with the declaration of or the signature of the treaty of such and such, where you um, uh, set down conclusions that um, uh, that distill the essence of what was discussed in that forum or in that meeting. Well, uh, very intentionally, this forum was designed in such a way that such a document is not produced. And uh, this is so for a, a, a number of reasons. First of all, we understood that it was much more valuable to simply be able to share, to share experiences and to share best practices. And that this, in an iterative process over the years, would lead us to uh, a better results, better conclusions than the need to force an agreement every time we met. But also for practical mm, reasons, in general, 
intergovernmental meetings that conclude in the signature of a treaty or a declaration have a rather perverse uh, mechanics because you either arrive at the meeting with a previously agreed upon document, a case in which whatever is debated in the meeting is irrelevant, or if it was impossible to, uh, to reach that agreement before because governments could not um, agree on a, on a document to bring to the meeting, then what happens is that while the uh, issues, the substantive issues are being debated during the meeting, in a separate room uh, behind closed doors, there are five people who are discussing the document that will be signed. So whatever we say in the meeting is also irrelevant. Therefore, um, in order to make the discussions substantive, we decided that one of the necessary requirements is that no decisions were made. And not making decisions makes it so that what is discussed is actually much more relevant than otherwise. And that is really the experiment that we are in the midst of. What we do, however, is to draw some conclusions. They're not conclusions as such, but we report uh, what was discussed. And it's very interesting to read these reports. They are available um, at uh, www.intgovforum.org. And it is so interesting because the reports basically say, well, some people said A, some people said Z, and a bunch of people said things between A and Z, so other letters in the alphabet in the middle. But there isn't a an overarching conclusion, um, not even in that report. Um, we don't even uh, say that A's uh, conclusion was more important than Z's. No, we simply say A, B, C, D, E, F were said up to Z. And those were the opinions that were expressed. And over time, this um, governance uh, system has produced very good results. And similarly, this isn't the only uh, venue for governance at the Internet. Internet, by its very nature, due to it, these characteristics that I referred to before, um, since it is a dispersed, it is uh, not centralized, it doesn't have a single uh, governance uh, body. There is what we know as uh, the Internet ecosystem, where there are multiple uh, players that um, intervene in uh, at different levels, and each uh, contribute contributes for this global Internet governance. But these are not necessarily coordinated, so um, each of these things happens in parallel. We identified, uh, and in my presentation you will be able to see uh, the uh, charts, but we've identified uh, six different venues that have to do with Internet governance. One has to do with the development of standards, which is what I, uh, what someone was, or rather what I was mentioning earlier. Another group that has to do with uh, those uh, groups that uh, administer uh, domain names and numbers, uh, domain names such as www.suchandsuch.com um, or IP addresses in the versions IP IPv4 and IPv6, also those who work on developing global uh, policies as well as local and regional policies, be they intergovernmental bodies or not, um, be, them, be, be they from the NGO sector as well. So uh, the group of institutions that uh, work on education and uh, capacity building specifically, uh, or users, users are another very important group, as well as those who are uh, service providers, especially here the private sector. Um, the business sector that provides internet services. So in the presentation that you will get a chance to see while you're watching this video, you will see each of these sectors uh, at, uh, at some level of detail. But you will also see that many of these groups aren't, it, it isn't even one of the players that participates, but rather governments, the private sector, the civil society, and the technical communities, different actors uh, blend in different ways to produce each of these groups, and they produce different results. And it is the interaction under the framework of this big umbrella of the various players produces various venues for Internet governance. Now, to summarize, the Internet uh, Governance Forum that we are participating in today is not the central body for Internet governance, but rather it is a venue where each of these instances that you see in the chart uh, meet once per year to share experiences and best practices. And that's all that it is, with no conclusions. So we uh, are now uh, open for a question and answer session. I think that uh, 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 by introduction uh, this, uh, this is useful. The world of Internet governance is infinite, but it is also uh, incipient. It is um, uh, only being born. So for many of the questions that you ask, I may have answers, but for many, I won't, because uh, many things are still to come. The best is still to come. So get involved in Internet governance. It is a very interesting issue. It is very valuable, and it is a place where you can contribute to um, cause real changes in the future, where you can have a direct effect and be part of the construction of the future. So um, 
Thank you, and I look forward to the questions.